that. But then at the same time, there's a time where it's like, hey, you just got you know four players that, down. That, and that may Throw be a their, pair and just go. That may be their downfall here against Oscar. To be honest with you, Hudson may have gave it to you guys. Um, you know, they're gonna win those initial gunfights. You know, we'll say maybe because that video was recorded a while ago, <laughs> but. They say they're going to win their initial gunfights and whole setups, but that is the team that E6 is. Um, but I think we know they win gunfights and they keep going. Yeah, they, you know, so it's two run, different play styles here. Uh, Optic Gaming can get very, very scary very, very quickly. Five seconds on the clock. I'm Guy Blaze. This is Benson, map number one. We're going to be on board here with Lyft. E6 versus Optic Gaming. And we're going to take a look here at the overhead map. And looks like both teams are going to break off and they're going to send three down to this B hill and two to Captain Home Hill. Going to kick things off with Explosive from Optic Games, worth mentioning as well. This grand final will be a best of three, uh, as was the European 2K final. As uh, Kenny now on your screens, you can see has the support of a teammate, but it's going to be Hudson's from E6, which is over there causing him a little bit of some problems. And will Kenny be able to finally find this kill? Hudson's more than happy to just kind of wait out. He's going to be pushed, and now Hudson's just kind of baiting out slowly. He doesn't really have any team support here. He's actually going to get pinched if he isn't too careful. Lava's the one that's going to try and come down the flank, but the support fire did come through, and Lava almost kind of got baited into that one, it felt like. No, he definitely almost did. And uh, Hudson, you know, he wasn't able to get any more support than that. He did come out with one kill. It is going to be explosive down. We're going to have Noxious push up here. He's going to have two members in front. He's going to wall bounce to the right, try to trade a shot in. And E6 will have a good advantage here in this fight. They just need to make sure they clean up the kills and start to break the hill. And uh, they almost would have had B-Hill there. Now we're going to see him slowly start to get B-Hill, but Explosive is there to contest Eternity. Noxious needs to get there in time, but Eternity is able to win that 1v1 fight. And now E6 will come out of here with a two cap. And E6 do have a little bit of a lead, around about 20 points as it stands, 82 to 62. B and C in their control, so they're going to be building on that lead as well. So now we really get to see kind of how up to gaming they will approach these kind of scenarios where they are down. I think previously, you know, last fight night that we saw, they were very, very passive. They, they waited, they absorbed pressure, and then they made a push as a team, and they were able to win those crucial team fights and retake control of the map. But E6, as we kind of heard in that video, you give them a two to one hill advantage, they're going to set up in a very, very tough to break kind of uh, setup. And that's what you're seeing right now. Look at that overhead, really kind of gives you a, a good look at those blue arrows. Of course, the blue arrows being E6, the red Optic Gaming. Hudson is going to put down a lot of fire. Uh, Optic Gaming just seem to be taking some time at this point to figure out how do we break this E6 setup. But E6 more than happy to sit here putting that shot to the ones. Now, as Hudson has talked so much about, uh, you know, their ability to be able to hold setups effectively, uh, is showing right here because Optic has not been able to break this setup so far. They are they are spread out in good positions of the match where they can watch their home hill, watch B. Now, Optic is going to do a four-man push on his B hill. Now, Hudson, this transition is going to be crucial here, and he's going to be all support here as he just puts a lot of fire down, making sure that Optic cannot get this B hill for free. But members of E6 will start to pick up kills here. They're going to actually get two kills. Hudson is opting to play across map, knowing that his teammates is going to lose the B hill. He pushed across the cap C to make sure his team held a two-cap advantage. And they now just need the one hill to win. And what was so beautifully elegant there about that E6 uh, defensive play mm -hmm. was they had the numbers over at B, up the gaming, they, they outflooded them, and E6, rather than staying and fighting, they gave up the B hill completely. They yep. sent extra resources to overextend with Hudson's. They were able to cap up to gaming's home hill, and just by doing that, they bought themselves enough time to comfortably close out the game. That was a, a wonderful, wonderful play from E6. Now, we rarely see Optic Gaming lose the first round, but now they're going to get that weapon selection. What Dude, do they want to do I'll, is the real question. I want to see Mental with a sniper rifle again. I, pr I know it's probably not going to... <laughs> oh, don't do it. Don't do it to him. Yeah, you, they they oh. teasing you, Benson. Yo, mental, See? man. Why you got to be like this, dude? It summons with the pick, but mental, I know you try to tease me, boy. <sighs> oh, well. well, hopefully we get to see it later on. Because last, last week, he was... Uh, yeah, well, he was He, he was, was a mental. savage. He, he was, was mental. Yeah, he, <laughs> for lack of a better word, yes. Yes, he was. A uh, very, very talented young individual. So those flame grenades are going to be used to kind of uh, zone out zone out that B hill, prevent players from actually pushing down there and prevent them from capping it uh, very, very easily. So the question is, who's going to fight that? It was Kenny fighting up there for Optics team, but it's going to be Lava up here. Lava and Kenny fighting together. The timing of those smokes allow oh, Lava beautiful. to get the, the frag grenades without being contested. Now, that's something I want you amateur players to notice out there. If you time your smokes perfectly, as you're picking them up, nobody can shoot you. So that's just uh, coming down to good teamwork and Lava 
with the nade there on Hudson is the quick revive on his teammate, knowing that Notch is in a good position. He's not going to overextend here, making sure he gets closer to his teammate where he can revive them. But Notch is going to actually overextend here. Wow. And he's going to go down there, giving up a free kill to Optic Gaming, and they're going to control this B Hill. Noxious maybe getting a little bit giddy there as he pushed in to try and 1v2. Optic more than happy to kind of take that trade. As it stands, Optic do have BMC under the control. Now we get to kind of see uh, the, the reverse of, of side number one, as I say that. Uh, a hill completely neutral. I was going to say we get to see how Enigma 6 can play off the back foot, but it seems like Optic Gaming just so aggressive at the A hill. Explosive not giving anything up. He, he's trying to get this melee and everybody. <laughs> just like, the beat you down. down. I'm gonna beat you down. I'm gonna beat you all down. As Explosive yeah. and Co will cap E6. Saying hill. don't mess with my you, money. Pow. You you see such a different playstyle between the two teams. You do. You see Optic Gaming capitalize. Instantly they on, get, on a small they, Yeah, advantage. they get that neutral point. They already at your home, hill. They're, they're I, I can almost guarantee you that 95% of the time we see Optic Gaming win an initial fight for neutral points, you will slowly see the domination fall, fall soon after. Even if they don't get it, you will hear that notification so, so, come in. So this is what's interesting. I want to get your opinion on this. Which playstyle is kind of more uh, likely to be broken? Is it you're playing longer so you're more likely to lose those 1v1s? Or is it if you all overextend, you're more vulnerable to all die and then lose a trip cap back, like reverse the trip cap, so to speak. Which, which playstyle is kind of scarier? Uh, I think I think the playstyle is scary is actually playing passive and trying to win off a of, win off a of point. Uh, just like I say, anything can happen if you find an opportunity to be able to close out the game, mm -hmm. you close it. But also those playstyles change as the rounds go on, as yep. those respawn timers increase. Uh, early in in the game. You almost maybe want to play for points depending on how quick that somebody is responding. You can kind of trade kills that way unless you get a big cluster of kills. But then when it comes down to late game, you almost want to play for points because you don't want to <laughs> overextend and get slayed and you get trip caps. So Exactly that. It, exactly and then that. it comes down to a fine point mid game where you get like those 16 second respawns where you have to make a decision on which play style you want to choose. Exactly but that's that. the beauty of escalation. That's why it's such a good game mode. Uh, as it stands, of course, it's 1-1 between the 6 and up to gaming. Map number one here at North American 2K Final. Our board with Noxious, and E6 should easily be able to cap that B hill. Of course, at this time, we are at 14 second respawns here in round number three. And we could see a domination coming from E6. E6 saying, hey, you know, hold on. We can be aggressive too, you know. We know when to kind of put our foot on the gas pedal, but they have backed away. But bear in mind, uh, the longer it stays like this, the better for E6. As it stands, up to gaming, not getting any points. They're desperately trying to hunt down Crushmo. But Crushmo, he's more than happy to just kind of bait one player out that was mental he will fall and uh, just that one brief kind of moment of play e6 have built themselves a 20 point lead you know i almost uh, you know asked myself should not just have pushed over there and helped his teammates out to fight a little bit more for the domination he opted to hold down control for his team and him in eternity he's actually going to pick up two kills there to secure that b hill for his team so he says hey i made a good play blaze i didn't need to push in there you know i can defend this hill by myself and now we're going to see e6 play for the domination and this time they should be good to potentially try and get this. Lava's going to throw the smoke. If they push off the hill, they're going to need to slay outside of it. And that's exactly what they do. And E6 showing that they know how to kind of turn the pace as well. They're not afraid. They don't want to necessarily always play for points. And so they apply that pressure just under two minutes that round. Uh, no Eternity currently sitting with six kills. Uh, currently leading the lobby. You know, you have to pick, in these Do earlier it. rounds, <laughs> you have to pick the perfect time to strike. Uh, because you have to know when you get a good cluster of kills, you need to know when you need to play for that domination. Uh, it's not a guaranteed thing to play for all the time, especially if you notice that your teammates aren't in a position to do it, or even if they have that slight bit of hesitation. The slightest bit of hesitation, hesitation will prevent oh, your team from oh, getting a three cap. They're trolling me so hard, man, <laughs> I swear. It's like League of Legends picks. <laughs> it is. It's like hovering at Teemo mid, and then all of a sudden you change to an Ariana. It's just not <laughs> as fun. It's just not as fun. But, oh, actually, Explosive actually leading the, the lobby in kills. My mistake, eight kills for Explosive. And uh, Tony trailing that just by two. Arguably the best player in this game right now. Explosive? Yeah, Explosive definitely he's came out. He's so good. Like, is it just he's played more? Is he just practiced more? Because, like, everything, he seems to be a very well-rounded individual. Like, when you, when you think about it, his movement is there, his shot is there, he just kind of has everything. Yeah, Lava trying to snake here, trying to overextend past the smoke, running that side rail here, and he's going to actually get himself in a position that E6 members are not expecting, and he comes out of the smoke, and he takes out a turning right there, turning not expecting, so Lava noticed that he has two 1v1s around him. He's going to opt to back out of here, stay alive, and he's going to rotate across map to make sure his team does not get three cap. Uh, the problem Lava had was his teammates kind of died on him there. He was in a great position to cause some, some grief for Enigma 6, but props to Lava. He managed to escape that sticky situation with his life. 
And because of that, can wait for his teammates to come up. Of course, 16 second respawns here in round number four. Uh, on board with Affinity, he's going to shut down summons. As uh, he just kind of pushed over towards it. But now, Affinity may actually go for a little bit of a push here. It has the numbers as they can try and uh, shut down. I believe that's going to be Kenny. Kenny will drop. So, as I said, the number is now heavily in E6's favor. You see them float over towards C. And I, I feel like on a map like this, yeah, you have to be aggressive. This is not a map where playing for points seems to be a consistent place. This would be a good motivational round here for E6. If they can dominate Optic back to back, which is no easy feat, but they will lose the neutral hill across map as of now, but Attorney won that 1v1 against Explosives, but he's going to get control over it. So Optic needs to make sure they recap their home here. They're not going to need points, but also the lead is not that big. Anything can happen, folks. This is domination. As Hudson's on your screen, we're going to go over to Lava's perspective. He's pretty tagged up. He's going to drop B. Uh, E6 are doing such a good job of just keeping that one under their, their control. Uh, consistently, time and time again, clutching up, uh, winning those big gunfights. Finally, their mental will burst onto the B hill. And he will shut down eternity. So it looks good that maybe up to gaming can start chipping away at the early E6 lead. Uh, of course, it's, as you mentioned, still very, very close. If it stayed like this, Optic would win uh, in terms of points. Uh, but we'll see exactly what Summon's game plan is going to be. And so Optic, they will get control over this B point. Now they're, they're playing catch up before they play for the domination. If they're playing for a lead because they know, hell, at this point, E6 has to make a push here. Mm -hmm. They have to. Uh, if not, Optic's going to get this lead. So now they're just fortifying their defenses and trying to see which direction E6 is going to play for. Are they going to play for the home hill? They're going to play for the neutral. And I think E6 will play for Optic's home hill. That'd be tough. But we'll wait and see. They're just trying to get themselves into a good position. That's not going to help, though. Uh, summons with the pick on Eternity. And Kenny now says, all right, well, this is my time. We already have one player down. I'm going to kind of distract uh, and force the E6 players to kind of fall back on towards himself. Uh, A goes over to Optic Gaming, but the problem is uh, B and C are both now completely neutral, and you can see the score. Optic Gaming have taken the lead. B should be good to go over towards E6, but here it comes Kenny. He's on the flank. Two plays of E6 in front of him. Is he going to be able to shut down one? He should be able oh, to. Don't do it! Nicely done. That's Hudson oh, looking oh, for another. Oh, Kenny! Oh! Oh, yeah. oh wow. If he would have got <laughs> done in right there. I would have told them they need to drop Affinity and pick back up Poseidon because oh, damn. you can't you can't let Kitty turn on you like that. But Affinity closed it out here, and this is going to be a close one, folks. E6 just needs to hold one heal Just now. hold A. Just hold A, and you win at this point. You don't need to do anything else fancy. Uh, Krishma is going to secure the W uh, with a nice pick and Noxious that with two. So E6 in control here in map number one. Three rounds to one, uh, the advantage. E6 looking good. You they know, are they looking very good. They looking good. They go up four to one. That's gonna that's gonna say something about these guys. I, I feel like this is a a big statement for for E6 as well. Not not just against Optic Gaming, for everyone else. You know, all the other teams out there watching who are like, oh, you know, Optic's the best. We have to worry about Optic. We have to worry about Optic. E6. A couple of weeks before the event, be Optic in a best of three. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, well, crap. We gotta worry a little <laughs> bit about E6 too. And yeah, it, it and can so, really give you a, a good mental boost. And you know, one thing I you know. I, I definitely want to say is that, you know, these teams have a few days to prepare for each other before they get to these fight nights, you know, and it looks like E6 did their preparation, and uh, Optic, with that weapon pick on the map, they placed incense there, uh, E6 had placed the shock grenades at the top, but they're going to have to put Botox there, and uh, I, that's a toss away pick, that's a pick saying, hey, we don't want to choose nothing decisive this round here, uh, you know, because we plan on winning, we want E6 to make that move, we're just going to put some Botox here. Still feeling confident despite being three rounds to one down. Now we're going to see E6 off the break. Noxious on your screen. He's going to have Lava in front of him. Uh, of course, Lava not going to opt to go through the smoke this time. Although we did see a, a bold push. Noxious has got his hand on the incense as well. And you can see, just trying to get as much information as he possibly can. Oh, you're capping B. Well, I'm going to try and cut that off completely. Is he going to be able to get the second one off in time and completely trap that player in Optic in? It doesn't look like he's going to be able to do so. Was not a good enough incense there to stop that, but he needs to get up there and help his teammate because he's leaving his teammate vulnerable. Uh, but Explosive doing what he does best, taking the slightest advantage that he can get, the slightest opening in the team strategy, and he used that to put some fire on Noxious' teammate, but that shot grenade coming out, which was, uh, it's gonna cut off, I think, I'm actually gonna say that's his teammate's shot grenade there in that position, but Optic will control this neutral hill for a little bit longer, yes. is gonna build up some points here, and so now E6 needs to formulate a strategy, and it looks like E6 is gonna play across the map and let these members of Optic 
uh, you know, have to rotate. So they're going to be playing for that opposite home hill. Of course, AC Explosive was able to get up, as well as that Kenny has managed to pick up a Baltok. See how much damage he's going to do with that. But we're on board with Eternity from E6 here. Teammate in support as they slowly but surely edge towards up the gaming's home hill. And we'll see if he's going to be able to put down some shots. As I said, they, they have numbers here at E6. They need to be careful, though, that no one from Optic overextends towards that C hill. Uh, it's going to be pretty tough, of course, though, with the, the size oh, of Oh, Turning needs to get in here, picking up oh. one kill, oh. picking up two kills. And they can get this heal, but the question is, what's going on at the B I mean, point? Bear in mind how quickly those kills came in as well. Yeah, so this could be a three players uh, Completely timed very well. That's four players down. The only one over here. Lover's down, or sorry, Lover, they only one up. Eternity has a teammate in support. Oh, he's not even playing, this is smart, not even playing for the fight. Oh! oh can't hop oh, over, oh, oh, oh. he's playing for the cap. Good job not chasing down that kill, Eternity. That was, you see what Lover was going for there. He was just trying to contest, buy his teammates time off spawn to, to then for them to contest their home hill. But as he was mid-mantle, he's safe saying. Yeah, he nah. gets chunked. Nah, pal, not, not today. This ain't, right. this ain't how we lose a domination. Mm -mm. E6, full one in the lead here, map number one. What does Optic want to do? That's the real question here. I mean, how I've many never, times does Optic practice in this situation that where you're full one down? And I, actually, Optic has placed every weapon on this map here. E6 just opted to block a, a, a weapon point. So what do they want to do here? They're, they're, they're baiting us, Benson. They, I don't think they're going to put Snipe nah, down. Nah, you want to do it. Nah, they don't, they don't have the that. cojones to do it. Look at that. It's going to be nades. It's going to be another set of nades. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be another set of nades. The, a lot of these teams, they play these nades throughout the entire match. Yep. I mean, nades are strong. It, it, no, they it are sense. strong. It makes sense, but, I mean, you're full one down. Uh, of course, this is the last round as well before halftime, so it doesn't really matter what you put. It's going to get wiped out. Um, try and give yourself a, as big of an advantage as possible for those nades have gone down in control room. But back, back to the point I kind of made just, just a couple of moments ago. How many times did Optic find themselves 4-1 down? It, it's interesting, right? When, when you're the quote-unquote best team in the game and everyone is trying to catch up to you, when, when you're behind, that's when you really get to see what a team is really made of. And this is a rare opportunity for us uh, for oh, actually see how these guys see kind of play from behind here. And I think Lava may opt. Now, nah, he's not going to hop over. He knows that Noxious is in a good position uh, <laughs> to chunk him me. if he hops over. So Noxious is going to cap that. And he's, he he wants Lava to hop into this hill. And he's going to use his right hand advantage. And Lava punishes him and says, don't you ever try that again. <laughs> right hand. What? <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> advantage? <laughs> you would have thought. Up to gaming spring into life. And they will secure the B and C hill. A looking good as well. And that is how you trip cap. And so Optic uh, does not go down here to a 5 to 1 deficit, but they will be down here 4 to 2. And it will be halftime here, folks. So all these weapons is going to get wiped off the map. Respawn timers will go back down to 10 seconds, and these hills will be flipped. Well, looking at the, the first half of action, do you think this is uh, E6's map now? Or, or can you see Optic Gaming kind of fighting back on the second side? Uh, it's going to all come down to this first round here, but E6 definitely has the momentum. But at the Columbus Invitation, we've seen time and time again where E6 had a lead like this, and they let Splice come back and, and, uh, um, you're and beat just, them out. You're just going to remind them of the, the horrible memories of the Splice comebacks. But yeah, E6 has to close out these games. Uh, they, For sure. They've, yeah, they they've had so many 7-6 matchups where uh, either they get enough energy to come back and tie it up, or they just kind of lose momentum and they let the other team just come back and win a game. So uh, if they can beat Optic Gaming here uh, a good 7-3, 7-2, that definitely makes a statement on how much they've improved. Well, on board with Explosive, he has Kenny in support. A player has been down as well. Of course, E-Hill now will be the neutral one as uh, Crushmo just dives in there. He does clean up Kenny and uh, he will pay the price maybe... Uh, or Noxious will pay the price, rather, for being a little bit over <laughs> aggressive. Crushmo just comes in. He's like, I'm going to clean up everybody. Not even worried. Explosive and summons both go down. So, uh, once again, the E-Hill, the mid-neutral hill, being controlled by E6. Now, if you remember the very first round uh, of the entire map, E6, when they had that 2-1 to one hill advantage, they played extremely passive. They didn't want to push forward for a trip cap. Maybe that's something that you kind of touched on earlier on, that decision of the respawn time. How much of a factor that has in E6's playstyle? Of course, here, round number one uh, of the second half, it's only going to be at 10 seconds. So maybe they're going to play a little bit more passive, absorb the pressure, uh, and just force up the gaming to break that setup as opposed to being overly aggressive, trying to get off the gaming space. Yeah, they won They uh, won a lot of the earlier rounds in the first half with the lower respawn times, and Optic Gaming always taking advantage of their man advantage, and they won the later rounds here with the 20-second respawns because they just knew that, um, you know, with E6 members being dead, they had more members up. They knew that they could rotate faster than these guys can respawn. And But we have E6 once again 
almost coming out this domination, but it's gonna be members here on Optic Better Home Hill. And this is actually, I take that back, it's gonna be E6's home hill. And Hudson is gonna be passively defending this, waiting for his teammates to respawn. And Explosive is gonna just push him back a little bit for his teammate to cap up on the home hill, but his teammate is actually not gonna cap up on it because Crush Mode is giving him a lot of problems there on the flank. Yeah, and Optic Gaming not actually getting any points whatsoever. And you can see that what seemed as if it was gonna be a, a good distraction play may have actually just cost them pretty heavily. E Hill is still in the control of E6. E6 currently the only team getting points. Explosive just cannot seem to cap this hill. Finally, a, a teammate will hop on it. E has been neutralized, so Optic now could be in a good position to actually hold up the trip cap, and that was them not panicking. Recognizing, hey, we may have to give up a big chunk of points here, but we need to win these gunfights. Sadly, though, they're not going to be able to do so. Three plays from Optic do go down, and I mean, look at the scoreboard. Damage done from E6, 160 to 95. I mean, E6 cannot throw this round away. Yeah, E6 just needs a two cap. Optic Game is going to have to fight to break this hill, and they're going to have to put all their resources in breaking their home hill all at the same time. E6 are just getting points, and they're in a position where they just need one hill cap in order to come out with this round. So Optic. They're going to have to be very aggressive, and with two E6 members down, they oh, can no. push for this domination. Like this. Can Noxious hold off this assault right here? It's going to be up to him and Crush Mode to defend their home hill, and Noxious missing the mantle kick. He's going to turn back around. Crush Mode it's to flank. Happening. E We're going to see, actually, Optic, oh. they're going to break this. E6 not getting no points, but members of E6 are going to be on respawn here. Can oh. Noxious hold off? Members of E6 are falling, and it looks like Optic Gaming will come back no. from behind, but wait! Affinity is oh. here! He gets shut down up to Crush Mode. He's, He's not going to get that. Time. He's not going to get it. And just as we say, E6 can't lose rounds like that. They lost a round like that. That's that's what I mean by closing it out. That's the round that... Is it, is it they play too passively? <laughs> like, as if they recognize, hey, we can win off one hill, let's play but, passively, so or, or what went when, wrong? At the position when they were able to win with only one hill cap, they had three of their teammates die across the map somehow, some way. They were fighting a fight that didn't need to be fight, didn't need to be fought, and they, they lost it. So, they, Noxious and Crushmore did a good job just hurling, just trying to defend until their teammates got there, but they just was not able to make things happen. Well, E6 in the weapon placement. Uh, the last time we saw them do it in round two, they blocked off. They're going to block off again here. Of course, we've only seen them in weapon placement twice. But as it stands, they do still have this lead, four to three. But I mean, I feel like their rounds, when you, you go back and you watch the VOD as a team and you kind of assess what went wrong, you're going to look at it and be like, hey, guys, come on. We, we have like a 50 point lead. Like, yeah. You can't let those rounds slip away. That's when you got to have a, a sneaky team member uh, just try to get past all the optic members. They're pushing forward, push behind them, and go for their home hill just to kind of prolong just the one hill you needed to come out with that win. Uh, those are the demoralizing ones. So we're going to have to have the leadership of attorney here to keep his team in this game and just push forward here and try to focus on round number eight. Eternity going to try and pinch Kenny in. It's a. Uh... 2v1, but Kenny has other ideas. He was able to shut down Noxious. Now Eternity kind of recognizing it. I'm, I'm pretty weak here. I don't want to get 1v2. Kenny, though, feeling himself, looking to try and push through. Will just uh, allow him to escape, of course. Optic were able to get that E hill on Kenny in such a good position now to just put down some Lancer fire. So E6 is waiting for their teammates to respawn here. They're kind of playing from behind, but not that much at all. And Kenny has a good position on top of the deck. So members of E6 will have to get him before they can even contest with this E hill. So they're gonna have to make sure they plant good smoke grenades to put up that smoke screen and kind of stun Kenny from making any plays. Just like that. And you're gonna, yep, you're gonna see that smoke <laughs> flap right now. It's not gonna stun Kenny and that's gonna be a bad push. You just see the crossfire coming in from Optic Gaming and Attorney actually managed to get up here with not that much health missing and he's gonna get a kill. Ooh. Picking up that one, he needs to hit this corner. Here comes Crush Mode to try to save his teammate and Crush Mode comes in and takes out Lava, surviving a, reviving Eternity right there. So now, Crushmo has to be passive. Eternity is trying to get the pressure off of Kenny. Crushmo understands that. He's going to be backing up Eternity right here. He needs to win his fight, but he's going to opt to survive and stay alive right here as Eternity oh, oh, oh. tries to win his fight. And Eternity goes down, but Crushmo keeping hope alive here from E6. The Yeti himself is finally going to go down. Crushmo, the crusher of dreams, essentially, over there at that E hill. Finally does fall enough to regain full control, but you know, bear in mind, as, as impressive as that individual play was from, from E6, that from Crushmo, doesn't matter. Look at the lead up to gaming are built now. 156 to 117. They were able to keep hold of that E and F hill. That smoke, as you mentioned, just not good enough. Didn't do a good enough job of, of really blocking off Kenny's uh, line of sight. 
and he's still going to be around that position, more than happy to keep control of E. Uh, and these are those leads, you know, we saw E6 kind of blow last round, but just don't feel like Optic's going to blow it. And so Crushmo, he's being aggressive once again. They need a three cap in order to come out here with this win. Crushmo is trying to fight, fight for Optic's home hill. He's taking a lot of damage. He's going to finally get some support here. It's all or nothing. E6 needs to push forward here, get the neutral hill, get Optic's home hill. But they're going to have to do that without three of their team members. Up to Noxious and Crushmo. The question is, can they do it? It's going to start with oh, Noxious winning this fight. What? And Crushmo winning a fight across map. Oh. Noxious cannot lose this, but he does finally go down here. Did, and Optic ties the game. Time. So unfortunate. An extra maybe half a second, and we could have seen that prolong just a, a, a little bit, but Optic have brought themselves back into this one. Now four rounds apiece. We're all tied up. Uh, E6 once again on weapon placement. So far just two blocks from them. Baltox seems kind of like a cop-out. And I just want people to notice how different halftime can be in escalation, you know, with the weapons right. removing off the map, changes with everything. With things respot, with, with, uh, with heels respot, res with heels swapping, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna see the Markska actually get put on the map. But we haven't seen too much action from the Markska, so we're gonna have to highlight that player as soon as he get it. What, what, what interests me as well is if you're E6 or up to gaming even, or any of the teams on Fight Night, two weeks away from one of the biggest tournaments with a huge prize pool. Do you really reveal all of your cards? Do you reveal all of those strats that you've been working on? Because if I'm a player or a coach, I'm like, hey, we're hiding everything. I think you need to just have at least a good... You, with Escalation, you can have so many strats under your arsenal per map. And we're going to see Eternity with some of this long-range fire. And uh, he has a good sight line across the map, but he hasn't done anything too significant with this Marksa just yet. His and Kenny will get his Marksa, and he will be up here for map control. And uh, this is actually a treat here, folks, because we, we don't see this too often. Really don't. As Kenny looking just to control this area. I mean, this this is basically just Kennyville, if you will. That's some that's some damage right there. That that thing has a kick to it, and Kenny's just trying to slowly snipe across the map here with that Marsa. So yet to actually. And, and this is where we see that escalation gameplay, not escalation, that, that execution, that old school execution gameplay come in, where we see a lot more passive gameplay where teams actually take the setup, take time to push, they're getting points at the same time, everybody has an, uh, oh. no big lead here, but Kenny using oh that movement, God, staying serious? alive, somehow, oh, some no. way, staying there to summons was able to come in and help him out. Uh, th you know, that's just a, a collapse there in teamwork. Ke Kenny just bouncing around, recognized his teammates who were kind of putting down some good shots. Just played his life for as long as he possibly could and then came up and cleaned up a kill. Nicely done by up to gaming and they will now, because of that, get control of that neutral E hill. So they're gonna start building themselves a lead. It took over a minute though before someone was able to actually control that mid hill. As we're actually on board with Hudson's now from E6. And bear in mind at one point they were 4-2 up in this game. It's now tied at 4-4. They need to try and break this up to gaming momentum. And so now E6, they will start to slowly uh, they will get control over this old B hill now, but now they need to use this to kind of flink Optic and take control over their home hill. And we're going to be a 4v4 here. Nox is going to opt to back out of here and just defend his home hill, knowing that he has team members down. And he's going to rotate over here and try to help Affinity out on this neutral hill and just take a different approach. Just, just taking his time. Uh, look at that overhead map. We'll show you. And still, Optic, they have Kenny patrolling that E hill. It's so hard to break him while explosive. Uh, he's going to be over at the other side. It's going to be Hudson's trying to shut down explosive. Is he going to be able to do it? Uh, shots going down from both players, but Hudson's gets the call out. Hey, Mental's behind you. Now they have a two versus one. Surely E6 are going to be able to win this. They will do so. Hudson's cleans up and also reses his teammates. So numerical advantage now in favor for E6. Of course, respawns at 14 seconds, but look at the score. 187 to 151. If you're E6, you got to go and you got to go now. Optic Gaming can win with a one hill advantage. They've done well. They've kept their home hill. Now can they collapse on the E hill and at least buy themselves a little bit of time? That's going to be the question. But Optic have other ideas. Eternity will go down. They just need seven more seconds. Less than that now. Five seconds. Summons. He's going to down. Hudson's in the hill and Optic Gaming should be good to secure oh. this win. Nox is not able to come in there and make a statement. And Optic Gaming coming from behind, coming from that four to two deficit and they're taking the lead here. Just a big switch in momentum. Really. And that just gives them so much confidence and takes so much momentum away from E6. E6 needs to fight back, which I'm sure they will, but they need to come out of here with this win. So what do you do in this weapon placement if you're E6? If I'm E6 and I'm in this weapon placement, you know what, you have to 
try to try to you don't well you know what you don't want to bait optic towards the bottom half of the map because you don't want to give them something that they're too deadly with. And I think we're gonna see a sniper go towards the top half of the map where the marks goes are. And so now we're gonna have to see Eternity get into that fight with Kenny. He cannot allow Kenny up to the top of that hill there without uh you know without fighting him. And Kenny's just been kind of making it look easy. Uh, that, that's for sure. As we're see a look at the overhead, three players from each team gonna cap the home hill and two players splitting over towards E on board with Eternity to kick things off here. They're from E6. Um, bear in mind it was over a minute before we saw the E Hill capped last round. It was a pretty slow start. This time though, E6 and uh, maybe gonna try to take the fight to Optic, Optic Gaming here as Noxious was able to get it down. Teammate in support. I believe it's gonna be Crushmo being aggressive. And they will have to find that first pick. So maybe they're actually able to get their hands here on this E Hill a little quicker than last time. Crushmo with so much confidence, but he's gonna go down there. That snipe will be up very soon. This is where E6 needs to cap up and play for points here. Noxious is gonna try to use his movement to take a few less shots here and making sure his teammates cap this hill. But, and that was actually the Torque Bow place up top. So I apologize that, about that, folks. And Attorney making good use of that Torque Bow. And he's gonna be defending this, this uh, E Hill. So you take a look at the strategy. E6 makes the aggressive push. They get control of E Hill before the lift makes it to the bottom of the map and open up those gates for you to be able to get that Torque Bow. And an Attorney can just single handedly hold this by itself. And, you know, hopefully he gets some teammates in here, but he needs to win this 1v2, which he may just do it if he can connect with this shot. And he takes out Kenny, but oh, he was not able no. to clean up Summers in time. And he tapped up here, and now Optic will get control over this E hill. And that's such a big win for Summons because, as you said, they have numbers at E. They should be able to flood the hill out. But you have to think if he wins that 1v2, he's a little quicker in this first kill, and he cleans up Summons. Maybe E6 would have been able to hold on to the E hill. For now, though, it belongs to Optic Gaming. Hudson's just desperately trying to crawl away. So for our new viewers out there, that it is execution rules. So when you see, when you actually down a player, you have to get up close to him and finish him off, or they can revive themselves after 15 seconds. So Attorney just was not able to win that fight in time, and Summons had revived himself in that, in, at that point, and he just won the 1v1 there. Now look at the overhead. You can see those red arrows, of course, of Optic Gaming. Uh, they may have to make a defensive push out here over towards E because we're getting pretty close to the end of this round. Uh, 128 to 119. So right about 70 or 80 seconds or so. And this one's going to be over, folks, as Eternity and the boys at E6, they pushed out Kenny from up top. Now can they jump on the E hill? Of course, there is plenty uh, uh, points still to be had. If they're able to control D and E, they will win this game. They will be able to reduce that deficit enough and take the lead just in time, but they cannot afford to lose their home hill as uh, Lava and Mental say, well, we're just going to stroll over to your home hill. We're gonna oh, that, that. that was bad right there. You got to just... You gotta have your team fire right there and just kind of read down that guy. All those optic members was in the open. We saw, I think that was uh, that was Noxious that pushed up there. He tried to get that kill and tried to get that revive there, but just was not able to. And optic took advantage of that. And they got control over two of these points here. Attorney needs to wait for his teammates to respawn and soon they're gonna have to get one of these home heals, but at the same time, they cannot give up E. I tell you, he's done a good job. He's holding E by himself. He needs his teammates to actually kind of <laughs> win those gunfights at D. Now they're going to at least have to neutralize F. But the problem is, E now completely neutral. So you have to see E6 flood that F hill. They just need to touch it. And in actual fact, they're going to do just that. They may be able to just they're, buy enough time to take the lead here. They're in a good position if Hudson's gets some help here. And he's going to actually crawl in here. And he's going to prevent them from getting points. And Hudson oh, he's doing revived. such a good job. He did such a good job, but is it going to be enough? A look at the score. You see Kenny B just rushing towards that D hill. Is he going to be able to get a neutral in time? Look at the score. Oh. 202 to 203. It's basically slap bang even. I believe Optic Gaming have half a second of a lead. Someone from E6 needs to try and break oh. it. Optic Gaming, I think they're going to get it. And I think they will as well here. And they will win five straight rounds and take this 6-4 to four lead. That was, that was a half a second difference. That was legitimately half a second of difference. Crushmo did just enough. He recontested the hill to keep it at one hill each and, and, and a neutral, but half a second. <laughs> that was literally all that. Those round are the rounds that hurt right there, Benson. They, they really are. I mean, how'd you regain after that? Especially considering you look back at this whole map as a whole, you're like, hey, we were leading 4 2. We're leading 4 2. And now we find ourselves not winning a round in the entire second half. And so now E6 is going to. Uh, Throw away this weapon placement, and they're just gonna opt to. They're just gonna opt to play with what's on the map already. I, it's, it's been a close game. They just gotta close it out. Like a lot of these rounds has been losses just off of basic rotations, communication, and uh, just a, f a few gunfights. So I can't blame them for it. I mean, you, you look at the one round they had full control of in blue, and 
this is that time where you're thinking, oh, you know, we could have had four, we could have had five rounds, this could be a tight game right now. We could be in the lead if we weren't making a, a few small, small mistakes, as you mentioned, but it is Optic now at map point here in the North American 2K final. Noxious from E6 is going to be on your screens as he's just going to slowly back away, but he's going to be challenged. And uh, Optic now really start to turn up the heat. 18 second respawn delay. They know that numerical advantages will win you <laughs> games. The summons just straight up has no respect for Crush Mode. Clearly, if, run if, straight at if it. If you ever want to say, when people say, yo, who's Optic's weakest member? They always say summons. Well, that's what Optic's weakest member looks like right there, okay? <laughs> you want to say Optic got a weak member? That's what he's going to do to you. So you better be ready to fight that. Yep, Optic Gaming. Very, very solid map one from them. They won every single round in the second half.